This time on the Gray Escape, we're installing solar panels. I got these two used 405 watt Jinko solar panels from a local distributor and picked up a piece of aluminum angle iron from Home Depot. I then used my angle grinder to cut the angle iron down to size. All right, so we drilled one, two, and three holes in the roof. And we cut the angle iron to size and laid it up here on top and marked it where we will need to drill the holes. We have now drilled the one, two, and three corresponding holes in the angle iron. Now we're going to use the file that I have here to file them into squares because we happen to have carriage bolts. There they are. And um, these are gonna need to drop in. This is what we have on hand. These are stainless and three eighths. So we're gonna go ahead and use these. But first we've gotta make those holes square to accommodate the carriage bolt. We used the angle iron as a template to show us where we needed to drill the holes in our solar panels. Our friend George came over to help hand the solar panels up to me and take some video. I went ahead and placed the angle iron with the carriage bolts in it in between the panels and attached everything with some bolts. The bolts go through both panels and the angle iron to hold everything together. Then it was time to flip the whole assembly over and scoot it into place. We tightened the carriage bolts from inside the bus and went ahead and propped up the outsides of the solar panels with some blocks of wood just to make sure that no stress was being put on the center joint. Then we started cutting down and drilling extra holes in these hinges. These are gate hinges for fences, so they're meant to be outside. And because they have a hinge on them, we didn't have to bother measuring the angle of the bus roof. because that way this meets the roof right where it bends. And then we drilled a new hole here so that it would line up with the rib on the inside of the bus. We cut this off because we didn't need the extra long piece that this originally was. And now we have this bolt attached to the solar panel and we are attaching this bolt to the rib from the inside of the bus. Here's what the roof looks like so far. Now it's time to get to work building a wind fairing to keep the wind from lifting the panels when we're driving down the road. I borrowed a roll of craft paper from my friend Mark and used it to make a template. I cut an eight foot strip to go all the way across the bus and folded down a flap to attach to the solar panels. All right, so I've got this taped up here, the flap underneath, taped along the top as far as I can reach. And the idea with this is that we're gonna pull this as tight as we can and make a line on here where it meets the roof. The wind is killing me today. Um, I tried putting wood blocks to hold the ends of this paper and uh, it's not helping. So anyway, what I've done is uh, flatten this paper along the roof and drawn a line along the seam on both sides as far as I can reach and that's about as far as I can reach. 
So there will be a space in the middle, but I think I should be able to figure out the missing piece. And uh, so now it's time to take this piece of paper down and see what we have for a template. I did my best to accurately connect the two curves in the center and went ahead and cut this out. So I had these two pieces of sheet metal in the garage of this house when I moved in. They actually made up a worktop bench um, and I've already cut a piece out of one of them uh, to help fix the floor in the bus. If I put them together, I have enough to go all the way across the front of the solar panels. So I have traced my template on to the sheet metal and marked a little bit outside of it for some extra play. This bottom piece, uh, the curve, I actually did it about an inch outside of where it's supposed to be so that I'll have some material to bend against the roof and rivet in. And these marks are just so that I remember uh, where to place the panels in reference to each other when I'm cutting them out or installing them. So these already have a uh, bend on the top, so I'm just gonna use that. And uh, right now I'm using it to help align the panels so that I can get an accurate drawing of my template. Um, I have one shot at this, so I really, really hope that I've measured this correctly did my best so hopefully it turns out otherwise we're gonna have to find a new solution. So I stuck the template back up here with some tape just to make sure that it was about right and it does seem like it's gonna work. Sorry for the bad camera angle. I'm on the top of the ladder I shouldn't be on the top of but uh that looks like it's gonna manage so let's go ahead and cut it out. Now that we've got this shape here, I decided to put a bend at the corner so it kind of rounds around like that. Since I don't have any metal working tools or a metal break, I'm going to go ahead and try scoring this with my angle grinder instead. All right, it's all scored. Let's see how this works. I'd say that's a success. Scoring the corner turned out not to be necessary, so I flattened it back out for the most part. I put a little bit of a bend here, and this is the almost final product. I went ahead and used my grinder to get a lot of the paint off of here, or to rough it up anyway, that way we can get some new paint to stick to it. And now I just have to drill holes. After getting the panels close to where I wanted them, I also decided to cut out some angle iron. I spray painted everything white. I know it's a little bit light on those pieces, but that's the front, so I'll be able to uh, paint that again once I finish what I'm doing uh, and give it a nice top coat to match the front of the bus. Let's install it. So I'm using these small clamps to hold this piece flush with the top. I'm gonna have to move on down because it's getting a little out of flush down there. But uh, I'm just using these white uh, outdoor screws that are normally used for screened-in enclosures. And um, they are self-tapping and they are rated for outdoor use. So uh, just putting the rest of this up. As you can see, I have attached the angle iron and then I went ahead and attached the panels to the angle iron using that lip that was already on the metal. I added six screws in the middle to hold the two pieces of sheet metal together. As you can see, I made a mistake over here, but I'll paint that later so that it doesn't rust. I went ahead and sanded this lip where the metal meets the roof in preparation for fiberglass. I wasn't able to record this part, but after Alan mixed up the resin, I just painted it on, laid the fiberglass on top, and then soaked the fiberglass with the resin until it was completely clear and totally saturated. We let the fiberglass dry overnight. Now it's ready to sand. 
We decided to just sand the edges to feather them a little bit because nobody's really going to be looking up here and I don't care if the texture's a little bit off. So yesterday we finished sanding the edges of the fiberglass, but um, it started raining later on in the day, which was fine. We had already rinsed the roof off, but the rain is just extra rinsing. So uh, this morning, even though it looks like the apocalypse, it's not supposed to rain until late afternoon. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a coat of spray paint on this and we should be done. All right, guys, so this is the final product. It's not the prettiest, but it works. And you can't really see up here anyway from the ground. I'm not super worried about it as long as it's functional and keeps that wind from lifting the panels from the front when we're going down the highway. I do have to clean some residue off of these lights. I did tape them off so that I could spray paint the top here. Um, so I do have to clean those, but aside from that, we are done with the roof, finally. Thank you guys for watching. Like it if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more. We'll catch you next time on The Gray Escape.